Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void! Today, gonna be a free for all sent in by Hyper One. It's on Riser's Winter Wonderland. It's a bit of a weird free for all. There are seven players and one computer. We've got a mixture of bronze, platinum, diamond, masters level players, and alliances are not locked. So we can see some alliances and then somebody get backstabbed by an alliance. So should be super fun here. Everybody is in voice chat according to Hyper One. And let's go ahead and introduce these players. We've got ourselves at the top side, a green Zerg. It is Yuri. We're gonna call him that. We also have a pink Protoss. It is Protoss King. The other side, we got ourselves a Korean name. We're gonna call you Korean. We also have an orange Terran named Neodemus. Neodemus, maybe. Hyper One's here too. It's a Hyper One. We also got ourselves a purple Zerg player named Mostima. Got a blue Protoss named Toxic Genius. And wrapping it up, we have a Protoss, or a Terran rather, whose name is I'm 12. Are you actually 12? Did you make that name when you're 12 and you're like 16 now? I mean, what are we. Were you never 12? Like, there's some chat here. You wanna be allies? People allying up early here in this uh, free-for-all. And again, these go long. These are always insane. I don't know if I've ever cast a game on Riser's Winter Wonderland before. It looks awesome. Looks pretty good, honestly. You've got your natural base down here. You can take a third base here that is protected by these rocks. But your enemy can knock it down and access your third if they want. Do we also have a safe expand? What is back here? Oh, yeah. Safe expand. You have to mine through minerals to get there, too. So a lot of safe places to expand, but can be threatened if your enemy wants to knock down some walls or get through, I mean, chew through a mineral wall, right? That's really sneaky stuff here. So this is Hyper One's replay, so I think this is him. We can see what Hyper One can see because it's his replay file. I think that's how that works anyway. But regardless, been a while since there's been a free-for-all on the channel. Definitely looking forward to the insanity. That is sure to result from this. I guarantee you, somebody's gonna move out to kill someone and then get backstabbed. <laughs> They're like gonna leave with their army and then an entirely different player is gonna come in and wipe out their base while they're away and they're gonna be mad. And they're gonna claim illegal alliances. But you know what? Alliances are illegal, so whatever. Reaper getting some stuff done here from I I'm 12. I'm 12, what's your APM I'm 12? 160 on average right here. Okay, all right, you're doing fine. Uh, te Toxic Genius doesn't have anything to stop you from doing this at all, except for a uh, cannon, so... Yeah, that is... <laughs> that's why you want to get an Adept out or a Stalker out first, rather, you know, rather than a cannon first. 1-1-1 one, one, one into 5 racks. Ooh, says Hyper 1. Okay, got an expansion down here going... Yep, Barracks, Factory, I'm gonna see a Starport. We're gonna see four more Barracks if the plan goes. We're gonna start nuking people because it's funny, says Hyper 1, it's true. In a free-for-all, nuking people, pretty good. Everybody's kind of worried about their own thing. If you start nuking people, there's less pressure on you, probably. Although, if they figure out you're the one that's nuking, they might come try to kill you, too. So, that's always a threat. Double starport, or stargate opening here from Toxic Genius. Dude, this Reaper, though? Five total kills, this Reaper, though. And gets out as well. Gee willikers, Batman. Amazing stuff here from the I'm 12 player. And actually escapes with the Reaper 2. Protoss King taking a second base. Zerg player already has a second and is working on a third, which makes a lot of sense. You're the only Zerg player in the house here. Ooh, guess who else is going nukes? Neod Neodemus. Neodemus. Neodemus? I don't know how to say this name at all. So Neodemus is going to wander right into Hyper 1's base. La 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 la. Unload his ghosts. I got ghosts faster than you did. Watch everyone freak out when I nuke. And then he's got ghosts in his own base. <laughs> okay, that's actually funny. Unload. Yeah, man. It looks like they have very long guns, but they're just the sights. They're not the sights. The laser sights that are coming off their, their rifles, which they're shooting from. I guess they kind of have sighting through their eyes here. <laughs> All right, so this is some impressive play out of Neodemus here. He's got himself a fusion core too. Is he gonna start? He's gonna start making battle cruisers after this ghost opening. I like it. I like the transition. It's weird, but I'm not gonna complain about it. I mean, who's gonna expect BC after a ghost opening? Not I," said the duck. Hellions rolling in from I'm twelve. 
Uh, I could have roasted up this entire mineral line, just chose not to. Decided just to leave. Mostima's on one base. Are you seriously on one base, friendo? Oracle's come in. Get some stuff done against Korean player, who I don't think has any anti-air to speak of at all. Except for these Marines, which is kind of good. This ghost casually has eight kills already. Gonna get killed by the Cyclone for sure. Cyclone is a better unit in this situation. A bunch of Hellions from I'm 12 coming in. Did he just completely spare the Zerg player down here? Mostima might be one of the younger players. I don't think Mostima knows what's going on. Or it's the AI. No, because it's the Hyper 1 clan tag. Wait, 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 wait. Hmm. I got pwned by ghosts. Lol. That is true. Turnabout is fair play. You were intending to kill people with ghosts, and now ghosts are killing you. Dude, Iori's got four bases. Four total bases. Who the heck? Who's the AI player? Clan tag, clan tag. Not a clan tag, but this is definitely not an AI, I don't think. Yori. And nothing has a name that indicates they're AI, so what? What am I missing here? Because you can't name AIs anything custom. Oh man, Yori skipped spores. Dude, Yori, honestly. Six and a half minutes, you don't have any spores up. You deserve to get Cloak Banshee'd in the face. Oh, I'm 12s here, roasting up some drones. This is the AI. Oh. How does it have a clan tag and a name? You would explain how you did that, Hyper One. I don't understand it at all. Neotimus, oh, he just helped, he's helping out Iori. Are they secret teammates? I mean, not really secret anymore. The paddle cruiser jumped in, didn't kill any of these mutalisks at all. And it's not, a, I mean, not killing anything Zerg whatsoever. So, all right, so we got some friends here. Dude, honestly, a battle cruiser jumping on Hyper One, I think Hyper One would just die. He's got, oh, he's got a good number of Marines. I don't know, maybe he'd be okay. Yeah, battle cruisers, Void Rays coming in, they really counter. Uh, well, Void Rays counter battle cruisers really, really hard. Yuri is trying to go for a fifth base. No, says Korean player. And then wanders on up into Zealotville. Wasn't really micro at all, and then the Oracles come in to assist at the same time. So Mew does. Oh. Then Mew does back out. Are. What? Secret. Secret alliances. Protoss King. Alliancing with Elori. Those Mutas could have jumped on here and done a ton of damage. There's nothing that shoots up in this composition for Protoss King at all. All right, all right. We're finding some secret, secret hidden alliances here right now. Yeah, the Protoss AI, or the Zerg AI, is honestly terrible. All right, counter nuke attempt, cloaked up and everything. Medivac dies, but there's no detection here from Neotimus. So Neodemus is going to lose a lot of stuff here. Zero kills. Let's rank it up to 16. 16 kills on that nuke. Got a lot of nukes on the channel this week. If you didn't watch that mana battle that I posted on Monday, a lot of nukes there too. Pretty good ones. Hyper One's got his more traditional army here just to finish everything off. Does he have to handle said battle cruiser? Uh, it's getting repaired, which is pretty good. Repaired BC is really, really strong. Oh, battle cruisers for Mime 12 are causing all sorts of problems for Yori. And yeah, he'd help. Obviously, Neotimus would help, but he's got his own problems here. Cyclone putting some work in. Trying to stay out of range of the battle cruiser. Failing pretty miserably at that. Does get taken down. Battle cruiser's making it. Man, Yori's trying to get like six bases up in the first nine minutes here, which is crazy. Another nuke attempt from Hyper One going after the enemy fusion core is going to land. Very well executed there. And this battle cruiser group from I'm 12 is getting a little bit really, really scary, actually. Extremely so. Yamato's done. Ah, just tearing through this poor Zerg force of queens and mutas, but not nearly enough queens to handle five battle cruisers. Corruptors, not really enough either. So Yori's taking some hits, but still has. Oh my gosh, the colors are wrong. Why are the colors wrong? We're gonna say 68 workers. Oh no, it's a different shade of green. Colors are right. Crisis averted. Jumps out. Corruptor ball seems too scary. We're gonna pull back. 
repair up and maybe go in for some more here. Meanwhile, Toxic Genius is in pretty quiet. He's got a bunch of Void Rays out, which again are going to eat the Battle Cruisers alive. He just teleported across his base with his 3 kill BC. <laughs> is he going to die? Dude, Neotus might just die here. He's got all of one SCV and two mules. He can't keep up. Oh, yeah. Battle Cruiser, that's GG. Neonymous is dead. Orange Terran, who went for the ghost opening in the Battle Cruiser, didn't worry out for him as well as I wanted it to. As well as he wanted it to either. Got some Vikings in the mix. Obviously, that helped with the BC immensely. And yeah, Neonymous is dead. Secret Alliance with Yori not helping him all that much right now. Mostly because Yori doesn't have anything to spare, and he's making corruptors anyway, which isn't going to help against this army of, like, marines and cyclones and stuff that's killing him. So, Anonymous is dead. Battle cruiser down! Corruptor's doing that work. That's what they do. They are built to kill big ticket items that can fly. Battle cruiser for Anonymous up here, trying to take down as much of Hyper One stuff as terribly possible. Got 24 total kills. Which is just mm, so... I mean, he's dead now, but that was good. 24 kills is good. He was Elori's ally. Oh, Elori. He only has Corruptors. Go get him. He doesn't have any ground, he says. True fact. So Neotimus is out. And Yori, like I said, only has Corruptors. He's got a bunch of Corruptors up. Ground Army consists currently of four Queens and some Spores. Or some Spines, rather. So first death at about 11 minutes in this free-for-all. A bit longer than I think we generally see in free-for-alls. Usually somebody dies real, real fast. But yeah, oh, oh, the battle cruiser army's like, I got this. We're gonna <laughs> run. So all you can do is run. That's exactly what happened. Void rays trade out very well against a lot of things, honestly. But battle cruisers are on that list. Hyper One building on the corpse of Neodemus. Heading the small army here is our Korean player who has uh, not the biggest army in the world. But he's going for it anyway. He's going to get stuck in here and die. He's going to get sandwiched in between two armies. A little TBT action here, and then... Yep. The sandwich. The sandwich is a good effect. For sure. Neonymous, he's gone, right? No, he's got a barracks floating out here, so we can still control this battle cruiser. Some swarm hosts in production from our... Is this really... From Mostima, our AI. We've also got pathogen glands on the way. Has two base rolling, which is super cool for Mostima here. Free Expos. Wait, wrong dude. Free Expos. Wait, what? Go kill the AI and take the AI stuff. They're not going to do anything today. The AI for Zerg is honestly terrible. They will attack you with like three roaches and like two hydras at ten minutes. Ooh. Scary stuff, AI. Hyper One making a push on the right side here against Korean player who came to kill him and is therefore getting summarily executed as a result. Did he take a tank hit? No, no tanks. All right, so yeah, Korean player dead. We're going to expand here, he says. Not wrong. You're going to expand here and you're going to like it. Maybe overstimming a little bit here. Medivacs don't have a ton of energy on them. In fact, they're very, very, very low on energy. But yeah, so Korean name is gone. Fare thee well, Korean game. Battle cruiser count for M12 is big. It is 14. It is 14 battle cruisers with 2-2 two, two upgrades and Yamato. Here comes the Corruptor Ball. There's turrets to fall back to, though. I like this. So we've got this... <laughs> got this Missile Turret Force next to a Spore Force. They can't harm each other, but they can definitely harm the enemy air units. Hyper One really needs more Medivacs? Here we go. More Medivacs joining the party. They have a lot of healing to do. And they're getting on that now. Free 
throwing up some spines to try to get rid of these mizzle turrets, which is hilarious. Honestly, very funny. No spine, get out of here. Nobody likes your style. And then you have to mine through here. So you bring some mules in for that purpose. How many do you need to do this? Is it just one trip? One, two, three, like four, five? One. One mineral. Yeah, okay. So one, two. Three. So he is going through. Meanwhile, Void Ray is pretty good against missile turrets. What the heck? Who got defeated? Oh, Korean player got defeated. More mules. <laughs> More mining through. Oh, got a little carrier Tempest mothership army up here from Protoss King now. But a ton of marines are a problem. Ah, I was using the... Okay, going... Nuking across the way on a big group of Protoss Kings. Oh, do, do not fly into this nuke. Okay. Too smart to fly into the nuke. Does that supply block him? Yep. 178 out of 140 available supply. Oh, some Vipers out from Yori. Or Elori. Or however, whatever that is. An L or an I, I don't actually know. We got a back door up here. This is Hyper 1. It's almost open. You. Go. There you go. And open up the final one. Okay, we can go through. Very narrow, kind of single file, but there's nothing to kill you on the other side, so I'd, let's do this thing. I mean, not single file, but narrowly anyway. So Protoss King in a spot of trouble here. I don't know if he wants to engage into this many Marines. He's going to nuke his own army. Hyper One, don't nuke your own army, bud. Pulls back, lets the new kill a huge ball of his own forces. Oh, Protoss King's over here. He, still allied with the Lori. He's here to use Tempest against these BCs, which is not a bad idea at all. Really good idea, actually. But then Protoss King back home, he's going to lose his Cyber Core. The overstimming of Hyper One is insane right now. Pretty fairly insane. Nuke does connect here. I think maybe killed one Stalker, which is cool, I guess, but. Oh, the Neural Parasite! The Yamato's getting turned the door. Oh, the teleport two inches, so you can't teleport away further next. Hot moves here out of Lori. Dang, the spell casting, getting it done. Battlecruiser fighting against Battlecruiser. The Neural Parasite still getting tossed down, and all of a sudden here, I'm 12 is not having the best day. I'm 12 is down to one battle cruiser and a bunch of missile turrets. That's the army right now, dude. Hyper One has an incredibly huge amount of really overstimmed marines here. Which zealots are gonna do better against than they really should. Adepts too, man. Adepts absolutely adepts too. So Protoss King's getting murderized. He's trying to escape by going through these ice structures into the safety of Elori's base, but he only has probes for it. They're not going to get through here anytime soon, and they're getting caught between a rock and a hard place here with... Oh, is he going to see this? Is Hyper One going to recognize this is happening? Uh, yes, he absolutely sees it. Oh, the Tempest helped kill it. Oh, ow, ow, ow. The overstimmed nature of these Marines are hurt. It's hurting my soul. Yeah, they're just... They'd be pretty good. If not for the fact they don't have any HP. It's got plus one, plus one upgrades. Working on plus two, plus two. So Protoss King is a dead nerd. Toxic Genius Sky tossing his way to victory over here against I'm 12. Who again, has exactly eight ghosts and is making five BCs at a time, but it's not gonna be that great against this holy crap, ginormous, scary Sky Toss army. Yamato's are getting some hits off. They take down... Oh, they don't one-shot Void Rays anymore, though. They used to. They don't anymore. But the Void Rays, if they're almost dead, then turrets do a better job of trying to kill them anyway, but kind of failing miserably there. I guess they're probably targeting Interceptors more than anything else. That's the default. I'm 12 taps out, understandably so. Thank you, have a nice day. Sky Toss Army here to obliterate everything that's left for my 12. 
I-12. I'm 12 here. So the Alliance of Elorian Protoss King is pretty strong right now. I gotta say, it's probably the best one. Right? We've got 108 supply here from Protoss King. Actually, Protoss King doesn't have any income, I forgot. 187 from Elori. A full maxed out army over here from Toxic Genius. Who's got the battle cruisers chomping on his front door? But then a bunch of void rays show up and it's battle cruiser down, battle cruiser down, battle cruiser down, battle cruiser down, and all the battle cruisers die, and that is a sad, sad battle cruiser army. Protoss King counterattacks on Hyper One and says, Hey, you killed all my stuff. I'm going to kill your stuff now. My army was not in a position to save my homeland, so I'll make it happen at this point. So battle cruisers on the way here from Hyper One Two, which I'm not sure that's what we want necessarily. The battle cruisers have not won many big engagements against Sky Toss here today, or even the Zerg, actually. Because Neural Parasite play has been very good from Elori so far. Yeah, Broodlord's showing up, bunch of corruptors out against your enemy incoming battle cruisers. Hyper One rebuilding that natural base, or I guess maybe it's a third. I don't know what number it is. Whatevs. Huge Sky Toss versus Sky Zerg versus Sky Toss army here. Parasitic Bomb getting tossed down. Toxic Genius just trying to whittle down what he can here. He's not focusing enemy carriers all that well. There you go. Getting some beams of light on those carriers. And Protoss King got to back the heck on out there. Toxic Genius too strong right now. Toxic Genius 178 supply. 144, 180. 200 actually maxed out army from uh, hyper one which is a lot of battle cruisers for the most part he's got the plus two plus two three three on the way for the marines gonna be useful in situations like this against a lot of interceptors against a lot of void rays for sure so elori has got another base <laughs> rolling protoss king has about 13,000 minerals so he's gonna be able to re-expand here right nicely Got a bunch of idle probes. I guess it doesn't have a nexus, so long distance mining isn't even an option right now. But, oh, for the first time today. No, not the first time today. But taking down these ice barriers into a gold rich Vespine geyser base. So, I mean, it's gold minerals and purple gas at the same base. That's crazy good. That is really powerful stuff. And that's exactly what Alori has been rolling with over here for a while. So, let's see. Can Hyper One hold off this massive assault? on his homeland. There are some efforts here to be sure. Mutas, Vipers, anti-armor missile catching all of the Protoss units there. Is it gonna be enough here? Nice target firing here. Do the carrier voidery combo is really good. Oh, interference matrix knocking three of the carriers out. Yamato's getting tossed down on the ones that have not been knocked up, but guess what? These ones are back. So absolutely insane plays. There's some ultralisks on the ground. From what the heck? From Mostima down here? What the heck is Mostima doing here? He's just sitting. He's hanging out, I guess. Is he here? Like, is he trying to attack? Is he helping? Maybe Mastima's not an AI. Yeah, he's just kind of following around Toxic Genius here with some overlords and some ultralisks and stuff and isn't actually attacking Hyper One either. He's just here. Is he, oh, is he trying to help? He's not getting attacked by Toxic Genius. <laughs> What is happening right now? I don't know. Oh, wait, wait. The Ultras, oh, the Ultras are now attacking Hyper One for some reason. I don't know why they weren't earlier. Wait, they stopped. Are they manually attacking because they're allied? This is so weird. I think that's what's going on here. I think Mostuma is technically allied with Hyper One, but also manually attacking his production facilities. So Hyper One's in a bad spot. He's got all of 700 minerals and 1,500 gas in the bank. He tactical jumps 
somewhere. Where did you tactical jump? Oh, right here? Alright, I don't know what that's for, but it's fine. So Hyper 1 losing his entire main base, 100%. Oh, was he chatting with Mostama earlier? He might have been chatting with Mostama earlier. There's drones in this army. Mostama, take a third base for the love of all that is holy. Are we sure this isn't an AI? It's behaving quite strangely. Man, I don't know if there's anything taking down the... The Lori at this point. He's extremely big and scary. He's got a ton of corruptors, got a couple broodlords out. Chipping away at toxic geniuses attempt at holding the super magic purple and gold of this base and the income that it represents. Are these banks? I think these are banks. 6,000, 5,000, 11,000 from a Lori and 8,000 gas. So yeah, Zerg player, this is pretty much his game to lose, I would state, at this point. Do broodlings have upgrades? No. No attack or armor upgrades for his ground melee units. We need more corruptors, says Hyper One. To Mostima, we assume. Yeah. But then again, <laughs> I'm so confused about the Mostima plays. Parasitic bomb, tickling these carriers a little bit. I mean, you're abducting them, sure, but then you gotta actually take them down. There we go. Beautiful abduct target fire in there. I mean, you don't really have to target fire because the carriers are the automatic target there. Nuke nuke. Nuke 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 Nickelodeon. Is this double nuke? Yep. Double nuke action, boys. So Toxic Genius income is not great. He's got three probes at a base that's mining. I guess this well three mineral patches back here too, so that's not good. to make some nukes up here as I'm 12, but considering I'm 12 is gone, that's never going to happen. Production tab is... Actually, somebody's producing nukes. Ah, of course Hyper One is. Hyper One is doing the nuke stuff. Where's his ghost? Oh, here they... Oh. No, it is I'm 12. What I'm 12 left? Maybe teammate is controlling I'm 12 stuff? Can you do that in a free-for-all? Do your alliances allow you to take over dead... Hmm. Successful. You get your enemies dead units. So this is some really classic ZVP stuff. Is there no detection here from Toxic Genius? These infestors are getting some really nice just hang out free burrow time here. Oh man, Toxic Genius's army just gets absolutely slaughtered by a lorry. So Toxic Genius might just be dead. What does he have for income here? Uh Got 900 minerals and 600 gas. Income is good. Can't really max out here, I guess is the point. Random nukes from I'm 12, still happening. Going after some of Alori's drones. Fantastic, good hits. Taking out an extractor for good measure. Queens in here to try to take down. Toxic Genius actually has some probes down here that have still been working all this time. And now they're all dead. Alright, well, hmm. Toxic Genius is done. Turns out ghosts aren't that great against Tempests. Pro tip.
And yeah, I mean, Toxic Genius, he's got a decent army back here. It's nine Void Rays and two Tempests, but like... The Parasitic Bomb would be amazing here. Where's... Oh, I guess it's just Neural everything instead. Okay, that does. Wow. Neural Parasite is way too good in the hands of somebody playing against players who don't know what to do against Neural Parasite. Yeah, honestly, bring in... The Vipers were not necessary, ladies and gentlemen. I thought they might be, but no. Alright, so Toxic Genius is done. That's it, man. He's got three Void Rays. And a dream right now. So Lori really should just win this thing straight up. Hyper 1's at six battle cruisers. And a nuke. That's his army right now, which is definitely not enough to handle all the neural parasite these infestors can give off. More broodlords I think would be cool from a Lori. Also, you know, upgrades for your broodlings would be super hot too. But instead, we don't have any of those. Amazing. So the broodlings are just chomping away, not doing hardly any damage at all. I'm 12 has a sneaky base over here he's running with right now after everything else he has is pretty much dead. Still, trying to stay alive. One orbital, one planetary, and a genius. And a... And a dream. Corruptors feel very safe going after individual Void Rays. I mean, when you're outnumbered from like 10 to 1, you're going to be fine if you're a Corruptor here. Even if traditionally you're going to struggle against those Void Rays for sure. So yeah, Protoss King rolling with some income. Some income. He's got a bunch of idle probes. He's got what? 12,000 minerals. I guess he can't expand here because Hyper One's living here and Hyper One's living here and here and Hyper One's everywhere. Neural Parasite EMP'd each other, and then they... <laughs> oh, man. Absolutely amazing stuff. Are we just grounding? Yeah, okay. Mastema throwing a ton of overlords into the Spore Crawler Forest. Must not know what not know what Swarm Hosts do? It really seems like Mostoma's allied with everybody and only attacks stuff when he manually chooses to. Which is not really the way to play a free-for-all. I don't know why Hyper One's chatting, because I thought he said everybody was on voice chat. Maybe some people couldn't be on voice chat. Yeah, see, look, Lori is fighting against Mastema, but his his units, I guess, are just move commanding? Maybe that's what it is. Maybe he's not attack moving, he's move commanding. So Protoss King's got a decent army back up here. We're looking at six carriers, five, five Tempests. Mastema finds a base of Lori's. Don't bring them towards me! Don't let them find my bases! I'm sorry! Find I'm 12's final home. I'm 12, I think it's just gonna get eliminated here. I mean, structures include that refinery, a missile turret somewhere. Oh, over here in Elori's base. Of course. The Ultralisks fighting against Broodlings forever and ever and ever and ever, which is something they will do forever because they're dumb. Broodlings are infinite dummies. Don't ever fight them. Getting up a ginormous battle cruiser army of 14 BCs and seven ravens. Here is Hyper One. 
I'm 12. Is that his final building? I'm 12. No, he's got the refinery up here. Remember that one? Yeah, that's right. Toxic Genius might be wiping that out too, just to make sure that I'm 12 never comes back. Yep, he's attacking it. He's attacking it. Gets this missile turret down, and that's it for I'm 12. Also, this is it for one of Hyper One's newer sources of income, which is not great. Actually, not great at all. Oh, and T-Armor Missile getting tossed down, you models. Powering up, firing up here, too. And T-Armor not catching as much of the Protoss army as I think he wanted to. Maybe another one would not be a terrible idea, but... He's target firing pretty well here. Carriers are gone. Tempest are actually doing more damage to the BCs than the carriers are, but... Tempest out. Goodbye. Protoss King gets knocked all the way down to three total carriers after the largish Protoss army he was dealing with here. Alori making an attack on Toxic Genius, who again has been dead for a while. Not really relevant to the game at this point in time. Kind of nuke his own stuff accidentally again, I think. Yeah, I'm 12, it's out. No forces removed from the game. Keep going, says Hyper One. What do you mean, keep going? Oh, these Ultras are killing stuff. That's nice. Giant Battle Cruiser Balls struggling mightily against the Force of the Corruptor Ball. Gets on out of there. Toxic Genius calls the GG. He's got nothing left. He's got a total of one Zealot against the Broodlord Onslaught, which again, no upgrades for these Broodlings, mind you. That's the, so they get plus three damage on their strike attack. Oh, my neural parasiting. Who's doing that and where? Did you just hear mass neural parasites? I did. I don't know where they were. They seem to be done already. I see you, infestors. Where are you going? Nowhere? Fine. Okay, so effectively this is coming down to Hyper One versus Elori. Here at 37 minutes. Banks on these players, 6,700 minerals, 5,500 gas from Hyper One, 10,600 minerals, and 8,700 gas from Elori. Toxic Genius officially taps out, which again, he should have done probably about five minutes ago, but hey. Can't begrudge him that much. Knocking Protoss King entirely out of the game would be okay too. I mean, potential for coming back from the dead is still here, as he is building a Nexus on the other side of the map from where his main is. These probes <laughs> are in helping the Broodlings. Probes have, I mean, they don't have any attack upgrades, but they've got more armor than the Broodlings do anyway. Yeah, Protoss King needs to send some probes down here and actually start mining stuff. He doesn't have any production facilities is a larger problem today. He has exactly two Nexuses and two pylons and some assimilators, that's it. Say so. So it's 13 battle cruisers, 13 ghosts, and 7 ravens from Hyper One. Elori is sitting at a total of 29 corruptors, 13 broodlords, 11 infestors, and 4 vipers. Both players are not actually Hyper One's maxed out. Elori's not. Despite again having 11,000 minerals and 9,000 gas, is producing hatcheries right now. I feel like maxing out would be pretty good. I don't know. Just my advice. Some overseers of the lorries are over here. I guess freeing up supply. Some snipe action while you're at it. Ah, neural parasites, a ghost. Gets an EMP off. All right, nukes coming up. Dude, nukes landing all those infestors would be incredibly hot. Oh, no way. Oh, no way! <laughs> the Corruptor Ball! Takes a nuke right to the face! Oh, no! Elori! Elori's down to 168 supply. Wait, that's where they were earlier. But, oh my gosh. Your models on all the Broodlords because there's no Corruptors to save them anymore? Now down to 120 total supply. Is producing 38 Corruptors, though. Which is a large number of corruptors, and these battle cruisers are going to be in a little bit of trouble. Is Mustama really just have two ultras here? Entirely possible. Yep, two ultralisks and a queen. 
At least Mostoma doesn't have any money, so there's a reason for it. Yeah, so the battle cruisers are feeling all high and mighty right now, but there are 67 corruptors out there with three two upgrades ready to punch you in the face. The battle cruisers have three three, so they do have an upgrade advantage, but corruptors were designed entirely to deal with battle cruisers. So here comes the neural attempt. Snipes on the corruptors. Neural does catch one of the ghosts here. But yeah, like I said, that corruptor ball is just too much for these battle cruisers, so they have to jump out of there. Ghosts are still around because corruptors can't handle them whatsoever. So they're sniping individual corruptors, causing all sorts of problems that way. Care or you, Protoss King, coming in to assist the Lori with again all that he has, which is three carriers. Got some income there, and over here too. Hey, look at this, Protoss King, trying to help a Lori win this thing. falls over the battlefield as we take stock of the situation. 192 supply from Hyper One, 181 from Alori, or 70 total from Protoss King. Weird nuke location? Like, I don't know what, why? You're expanding over here. I don't know what that play is at all. Protoss King might actually have overextended a bit here. Yeah, Yamato's clearing out two of those BC or those carriers very easily. And not quite able to catch that one as it escapes. Protoss King knocked down to one carrier. 53 corruptors, three infestors, 69 workers for Alori. 9,000 mineral, 6,000 gas. A bigger bank than Hyper One, but not by a whole ton. But the Zerg ability to remax more quickly is going to be useful here for sure. And has been useful already so far. We saw how fast 60s plus corruptors were tossed up, right? Corruptors getting some hits off, and yeah, sure. Snipes doing what they can, but just gotta jump out and you gotta leave your poor ravens to die. Anti armor missile catching his own ghost, but nothing can hit them, so it doesn't really matter. Snipes getting some work done here, alright. Corruptors have to back on out. Protoss King sending some probes down to maybe another expansion location. He can mine from here. Getting as much gas as possible, not a terrible thing either. Corruptors pulling back. They're going to heal up, as all Zerg units do, but slowly. They're not mutalisks with a Chichi regeneration ability. So finally getting adrenal glands here at 43 minutes. Uh, with, again, no upgrades for Zerglings except for speed. So speed and adrenal on 0, zero Lings is going to be something. Fleet Beacon on the way from Protoss King, doing what the Protoss King will do, which is build Fleet Beacons and Carriers and whatnot. Still not harvesting this gas, which I feel like he should do. He's only got 400 gas in the bank. It's not like he's rolling in it. But, um, a super silence falls over the battlefield here. Miglings, run around. Protoss King making himself useful by killing Nexuses with probes, mind you. My, he just pinged to mine. Oh, you want me to mine through these? Okay. I guess, sure. It goes pretty well with mules, doesn't it? That's cool. This is bait. He's trying to bait him into these nukes, but the dots are a little too easy to see. 
And they're just kind of out in the open like this. Oh, that ghost wander. Okay, that nuke gets wiped out by... Oh, canceled nuke. Okay. Now 300 minerals. Monster, I could use another hatchery. Oh, no. We didn't actually mine through. <laughs> the mules failed in their mission. They all simultaneously die. So, Neural's EMPing themselves and hitting themselves, but not enough to wipe out the entire ghost army. They don't have... I mean, they don't have any kind of AoE or anything. Infested ghosts look cool, man. Can you imagine coming back from being infested and your friends are like, Yeah, you totally shot Tommy in the face. He's dead now. While you were being mind-controlled by the Zerg. And it's like, okay, how do you deal with that? You probably need therapy. Like, you'd know, logically, it's not your fault, but like, you did it, you know? All right, Mastama doing some stuff. He's got three, three on his lings. He doesn't have adrenal glands because why would he have adrenal glands at 46 minutes? That's hilarious. The path has been opened, says Hyper One. But, I mean, sure. It's just... I guess there are some minerals here. A total of about 700? Yeah. Actually, exactly 700. That's funny. More nukes! 46 minutes. He's clear and creep with nukes, which is actually something we've seen before in ZBTs at the highest level. So Ghost BC trying to make this thing happen. Lings from Mostama trying to find stuff to kill. There's an assimilator up there you could actually get rid of, but you know, just running around is all. You're only told to run around, not necessarily to hunt for things to kill. See, once again, EMP is his own buddies, but doesn't kill any of them. I don't think, anyway. Double nukes, keeping the Zerg army back. These corruptors flying through the nuke zone to get out of there as soon as possible. Bunch of Tempest from Protoss King. Gotta get out of there. Yeah. Battle Cruiser Army against a Corruptor Infester Tempest Army really isn't going to stand a chance. Sniping Corruptors. The Ghosts have been doing that for a long time. Giant random missile turret forest up here. Fun, I guess. No. Okay, yeah. So Protoss King sees the nuke immediately. Alori's a little bit later, but still on time. To recognize what's up and get the heck on out of there. Another nuke bait. Nuke bait. Chase me. Chase me, he says. Come on. Come on. Oh my gosh, he got it. He got it! Oh, second nuke bait success today from Hyper One. That was great. The lore is down to 5,900 minerals and 4,400 gas. Or no, rather, no, that's, that's Hyper One. They're both green, you see. 6,400 minerals and 5,100 gas from Elori. Somehow, Protoss King, again, he had a huge bank. Protoss King is spending his money, finally. Has managed to come up with a ginormous Protoss army again, because he doesn't die, this dude. Six carriers, 15 Tempests in battle. Really, this is effectively a 2v1. I just, I gotta say, I think if Alorian and Protoss King just show up and just start wiping out all the Terran buildings they find and force the battle cruisers to engage with them, I think they'll be fine. I really do. They say never base race a Terran, but if your entire, your entire army is sky tossed, you're gonna be fine. Mm -hmm. 
All right, wiping out Mostima is it's a it's progress towards your goal. And once again, jump out. Mostima's like, I might just be toast here. Yeah, man. You, you, you know, I'm going to assume you're a younger player. Maybe not super experienced at StarCraft, and that's fine. Hope you had a fun time in this game, but yeah. It looks like, oh, okay. Might not be going particularly well for you at this moment, and that's okay. If you're alive at the 50-minute mark of an 8-player free-for-all, you're going to be awesome. Hide behind me, get a drone in here, and keep you alive. But that was some beautiful snipage on the Broodlords, by the way. Broodlord count, I think, just got knocked down to zero. One. One Broodlord remains after that beautiful stuff. Where? Anywhere. Just <laughs> Send a drone where the army is not at the moment. Here's a good spot. Sure, back here's a good spot. All the way in the middle of these missile turrets. Not a terrible place either. Massimo loses another hatch. The Tectonic Destabilizer's upgrade is here. The Tempest doing bonus damage to buildings. Lori's got bases all the way down here, too. I mean, that's how. Or maybe you could start killing... I don't know where you're going home, Protoss King. You want to engage? I guess you wanted to engage. Catches some EMPs to the face. A lot of shields getting knocked off here. Pulling back as a result. Nukes, though! Yeah. Catching more of these corruptors. Valori not being as careful with the nuke dots as I would expect him to. So he makes the wounded corruptors into broodlords, which is awesome. Because it regenerates all of the HP that you've lost. And gives it all back. It's nice. Do that. These Tempests, can they one-shot a BC? Anti armor missile connects. Broodlords, Broodlords. See, look, injured. Perfectly healthy. Ta-da. Oh, they do keep... Well, now they're dead. They do keep anti-armor missile, though. That's not something I think I knew. If you anti-armor missile something that morphs into something else, does it keep the debuff? And yeah, certainly does. More nukes. Just keeping Protoss King to stay back. And by that, I mean charge forward blindly. Dude, get him up. Oh, oh no. Oh my gosh, that was so close. That was so close to every Tempest dying there. Smoking crater, which the creep covers over quite nicely. Perfectly. Ding! <laughs> so, massive Corruptor Ball. Our Team Protoss Zerg down here is 50 Corruptors. 6 Carriers, 15 Tempests, versus 11 Battle Cruisers, and the power of nukes. No, why are you backing out here? Keep going! You've got it! Elori, Protoss King, it's a 2v1! You really should be able to win this thing! The army supply is... Yeah, it's double that. Although, a bunch of seven battle cruisers just got pulled up there now by Hyper One. Honestly, if Elori would get upgrades for his broodlings, I'd feel way better about his chances. It's again, gonna brood lord up some of these corruptors to get them back up to full health. And suddenly, Hyper One kind of backed into a corner here. I don't know if he can move out. He's waiting for his additional seven BCs to show up, but is that even enough? I don't know. Apparently, Protoss and Alori back out, which I don't agree with. Reinforcing Corruptors flying through Missile Turret Alley to their deaths. I guess any building you can kill is going to be a good building you can kill. Anti-armor missile up north, killing some of these turrets. Engage together, though. God, oh, beautiful fungals on these ghosts, so they can't snipe anymore. And honestly, if these broodlings had upgrades, they'd be so much better, though. They really, really would. Look how long it takes them to kill a single ghost with three armor. Nukes a lot of his own turrets there, and a little bit of desperation. 
Hyper One has a tiny bit of income at this gold base, but not really worth saving. What is? I mean, that's it. That's the final bit of minerals. Gets out and dies in the hands of that SCV. Dude, Protoss King coming back from the absolute dead is crazy to me. Yeah, once again, attacking on his own. He's losing a lot of Zerg here. Where's your Protoss army and why are they all the way over here? Protoss King backstabbing maybe. Maybe leaving Alori to die here. Maybe that's the play. Recognizing Alori struggling against this ghost battle cruiser thing. Leaving him to die, pulling into Turtle. He's like, no, just kidding, I've been here the whole time. Yep, I didn't try to leave you to die out here, not at all. And once again, you'll leave your ghost to die when you teleport out of there, BCs. Just a thought. Just a thought. More nukes on the way from Hyper One. SCV count can't be hot. It's got 55, which is fine, I guess, but... Base is effect- or base. Map is effectively mined out, I think. We're at that point now. So banks are going to start getting depleted without really much replenishing going on. Yamato's a free unit, <laughs> right? He's just on a cooldown. More double nukes, just hoping the Protoss army wanders into it. Yeah, but the range on these Tempests can just whittle down Temp Battlecruiser time and time again here. Just absolutely perfect. Perfect unit for this. You just target one of them down, wipe it out. And Battlecruiser down. And Battlecruiser down. Okay, just whittling through here. And I don't know, they just can't stand and engage. So if I honestly was Team Protoss King and Alori, I'd be up here killing this base. Oh, that is actually kind of a full base happening. I'd kill this base, this base. I'd kill these production facilities, right? I would make sure Hyper One, uh, it would be not worth it for him to hide here among these missile turrets, right? He'd have to engage and, or maybe just let all that stuff die and then that's a win too. So Hyper One in a tough position and really Protoss King and Alori kind of falling right into it, you know? Like just continuing to attack and to into the Terran army where he can fall back to these million missile turrets. Yeah, go kill the rest of his buildings. That's what I would totally be doing here. The Lori expanding to dead locations that have been killed and replanted and killed and replanted over and over again. Battle cruisers down, going down here though. Battle cruiser count is only six at the moment. Tempest don't care about your missile turrets all that much, and neither do the Broodlords unless they're wandering into range, which they do sometimes. Dude, honestly, Alori not having upgrades is killing me right now. No attack, no armor upgrades. I know maybe you think they're for lings, but they're for Broodlings too. Now nah, Alori's way too good at Zerg to not know that, but is just choosing to completely gimp his own Broodlords here. In a way that seems very, very weird. See, once again, Protoss army pulls back. Says, I'm going to let you two fight forever, I guess. Yeah, so I guess make your wounded corruptors into broodlords again. We know the pattern. We know how this works. There you go. Wiping out missile turrets. That's all you got to be doing here. Wiping out missile turrets, wiping out sensor tap, and then pulls back. Protoss is like, I don't want to weaken Hyper One too much. Because then he might not be able to kill Alori. <laughs> Protoss King has some designs on hand here. It's a free-for-all after all. Alliances are always temporary in a free-for-all. Alori's money looking 6,700 minerals, 3,000 gas, looking all right.
What they really need is some good anti-ghost stuff. So that when the battle cruisers jump out and the ghosts are left exposed, like a fungal on them with a bunch of charred lots running at their face would be amazing. I think that'd be pretty good. Protoss King is sitting on 8,000 minerals, so like a bunch of zealots is not beyond him. Oh, no, 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 One Tempest gets caught on the edge of that nuke blast. Not too shabby. Rebur trying to reburrow his spores on in here. Yamato's up. Maybe the Zerglings are intended, but again, the Lings don't have upgrades. The Lings are at zero, zero. <laughs> I mean, the Tempests are pretty good at dealing with ghosts. They're not terrible at it. Push and grab back the creep as much as terranly possible here. Nuke coming in on one of Alori's completely expired bases. I mean, resources aren't infinite. I don't know. I'm necessarily a fan of that. But hey, if a couple spores die, who am I to complain? Yeah, just really trying to push the creep back. Zerglings want to jump on those ghosts. The ghosts are doing a pretty good job running here. Oh, these guys aren't. But these lings don't have any upgrades. They have adrenal. They don't have any armor or attack upgrades at all. And finally, the ghosts get wiped out. Battlecruiser army is struggling a lot right now. I mean, wiped out. There's still ghosts over here. And then the battlecruisers jump. And then this base goes down. Like, Alori, if you're watching this... I'm sure you're aware. I'm sure you don't need me to tell you that you didn't have any upgrades on your Zerglings or your Broodlings and that it caused you some real pain in this game. Just hurt a lot. Protoss King, again, not involved in that engagement, mind you. Just kind of casually hanging around, hoping a Lori burns through his bank sooner rather than later. But it's only two battle cruisers and 18 ghosts up here from Hyper One. Production tab says more battle cruisers are needing some more of those against this largely Tempest and Corruptor army. I don't think I agree with that necessarily, but you know, man's gotta do what he does. Broodlords, get out of there! No. They do not. Zerglings run to their deaths. I totally think Protoss King can help wipe out Hyper One and then turn around and kill Alori. I do think so with the current composition anyway. It's not a lot of Corruptors. It's only 12. It's actually, Protoss King, do you have good upgrades today? No, you have plus three attack, but only plus one armor. With, again, I'd point out 8,000 minerals and 5,000 gas. Is he maxed out yet? Kind of. 188 supply. Alori having a rough time remaxing too. 127 supply. Production tab is empty. Just not spending the money all that well. Only has 1,800 gas though. And once you run out of gas and all you can make are Zerglings and Queens, that gets really dicey. If you're trying to kill somebody with battle cruisers, for example. So, Protoss King, I, I don't even know what this is. Attacking across the map with probes to free up supply, I guess. Make some zealots. I know you don't have any gateways, I guess, is the problem here. 
But, you know, gateways are not expensive. They're only minerals, again, of which you have 8,000 of them. Anti-armor on probes is hilarious. That's pretty good. That is honestly pretty good stuff. Uh, random nukes. Uh, just again, clearing creep. Pushing the Zerg player back. Oh my gosh, Alori, my kingdom for a melee upgrade of some kind. I mean, okay, Adrenal counts, but not remaxing. Alori's just kind of like, I got 12 Corruptors and 25 Lings. That's all I'm capable of today. Maybe tired. I mean, this is an hour and six minutes into this thing. And sometimes your brain, it just isn't functioning at its highest level at this stage of the match. Yeah, the queens don't. The queens are zero zero two. They don't have attack armor or armor upgrades. Interference matrix on a couple of these dudes. Oh, and then they get jumped on. They get yumped right on there. And the tempest army getting whittled down here quite nicely. Zerglings try to assist. Here comes Alori, a good teammate. And it's actually going to help wipe out these BCs for like the third or fourth time today. They jumped in there. They can't jump out. But then the ghosts on the ground are doing amazing work. Stutter stepping, killing Tempests. There's only Queens here with, again, zero, zero upgrades. They're not going to trade well against these fully upgraded ghosts. Transfuses are happening. Ghost army of 20 ghosts. Is, that is it. That is all Hyper One has right now. This is insanity. <laughs> Battle cruisers maybe not paying for themselves all that much, but do this mass ghost thing. Oh no. Protoss King had a bunch of carriers he didn't tell us about here. Uh Ghosts are like, we don't care. We'll kill you. Yeah. The Lori's done. The Lori's walked away from the game, apparently. It has five queens, 30 lings, 200 gas, and 200 minerals. I guess that's the larger problem here. Is all that a Lori can make is going to be Zerglings in a minute. So two extractors coming up from a base that a Lori found that is surprisingly not all that mined. Yeah, got the drones ready to go there for sure. Six Marines in production from Hyper One. First time we've seen that in a while. There is a full 4,000. Yeah, 4,000 gas. So that gas income is going to be extremely useful if Lori's going to try to win this game with anything other than Zerglings and Queens at this point. Cloaked Ghosts catching your butt out in the open here. Wait. You're... Apparently got scanned. Lori building um, creep tumors for some reason right now. Muling out this final gold base that exists. I think that's the final bits of gold minerals that exist on this map at all. Whew! Some investors on the way with a newfound gas that Alori managed to pick out of a long forgotten base down here. Important. Important that gas is. Hyper One on a bit of a push out here, a bit of a rampage attempt. EMP doing some good work. Zerglings on the flank attack. Zero upgrade Zerglings. Some queens in here too. And Alori is tapped out. That's it, man. Protoss King tapped out too. And Mastema and Hyper One are victorious. Whoa. Bit of an abrupt, bit of an abrupt top, tap out there at a one hour and ten minutes, but we'll take it. Whew. <laughs> 
Hyper One with his great ghost control, battle cruiser control there, th building a bunch of missile turrets to assist as well, just able to hold off the combined forces of Alori and Protoss King and get the win here today. What was left from Protoss King? Six carriers and a Tempest. And Alori lost this game because did not get any upgrades for Broodlings or Zerglings today. Only 300 gas and 800 minerals. Protoss King sitting at a decent bank, but didn't want to fight this on his own, I guess. I thought maybe he was going to wait for Alori to tap out and then go for it, but nah, he figured once Alori was gone, he was gone too. So, Team Hyper One and Mastama are your winners here today. Mastama has no buildings remaining. Oh no, has an extractor down here. There it is. One extractor and a dream for Mastama. That was something to be sure. I don't get a unit's loss tab here because it's a free-for-all and it's way too big. And I wasn't played with the Game Heart interface anyway. But, end of the day, wow. Hyper One lost 162,000 resources. Alori ended up losing 140,000 resources. Everybody else is like 50, 20. It's not a lot, man. But those two players, monsters. Monsters of the free-for-all. And Hyper One comes out on top in a clan of his own making, no less. Awesome. Awesome, awesome free-for-all. Very, very fun. Oh. <laughs> I feel like I need to take a rest after that. You probably do too, just from watching it. I mean, the player's playing, and I'm sure it's collapsed. I'm sure Hyper One was like, Doo -doo, like fell off his chair, slept on the floor for a couple hours. Yeah, nukes were a big part of that too. I forgot to mention those. Nukes in play. But, yeah, disgusting. Disgustingly good, good, good play. Like a fungal on the ghost and a big charge lot charge would have been amazing in that situation, I gotta say. Maybe some disruptor hits. Trying to get on that block of ghosts would have been good too. Just some things to try. If you're dealing with a block of ghosts that is more than just, you know, a bunch of tempests, which is not usually going to work out all that well. Traditionally. Poof. All right, well, shoot, that's going to be it for me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of a StarCraft II Legacy of the Void and a bonus Patreon cast. Actually, this was just a, this was Hyper One, not a Patreon cast, but a uh, a pay for cast situation. Anyway, amazing free-for-all. I mean, I enjoyed it immensely. I hope you did too. But yeah, you can find me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.